Five, four, three, two, one. The RMS Titanic, a luxury steamer, sank in the early hours of April 15, 1912, off the coast of Newfoundland in the North Atlantic after colliding with an iceberg on its maiden voyage. Moreover, 1,500 of the 2,240 passengers and personnel on board were killed in the tragedy. Titanic has inspired innumerable books, articles, and films, including the 1997 Titanic film starring Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. And the ship's story has entered the public consciousness as a cautionary tale about the dangers of human hubris. The construction of the RMS Titanic. The Titanic was the result of heated competition between competing shipping lines in the first part of the 20th century. The White Star Line, in particular, found itself in a steamship dominance war with Cunard, a historic British corporation with two standout ships that were among the most sophisticated and opulent of their day. Cunard's Mauritania first set a speed record for the quickest average speed during a transatlantic journey, 23.69 knots or 27.26 miles per hour, in 1907, a record it held for 22 years. The same year, Cunard's second masterpiece, the Lusitania, was launched and praised for its beautiful interiors. The Lusitania was sunk by a torpedo launched by a German U-boat on May 7, 1915, killing approximately 1,200 of the 1,959 persons on board and precipitated the United States' entry into World War I. J. Bruce Ismay, chief executive of White Star, discussed the construction of three enormous ships with William J. Peary, chairman of the shipbuilding business Harland & Wolf. The same year Cunard debuted her two magnificent liners. Each ship in the new Olympic class of liners would be 882 feet long and 92.5 feet wide at their widest point, making them the largest of their time. Work of the second of these three ocean liners, Titanic, began in March 1909 at the vast Harland and Wolfe shipyard in Belfast, Ireland, and lasted non-stop for two years. On May 31, 1911, the Titanic's massive hull the largest movable manufactured item in the world at the time slid down the slipways and into Belfast's River Lagan. Over 100,000 people turned up for the launch, which took just over a minute and went off without a hitch. The hull was promptly hauled to a massive fitting-out dock, where thousands of workers would spend the next year erecting the ship's decks, luxurious interiors, and the 29 massive boilers that would power her two main steam engines. The Titanic's unsinkable flaws According to some theories, Titanic was doomed from the start by a design that many praised as cutting edge. The Olympic-class ships had a double bottom and 15 watertight bulkhead compartments with electric watertight doors that could be operated individually or simultaneously through a bridge switch. These watertight bulkheads prompted Shipbuilder magazine, in a special issue devoted to the Olympic liners, to declare them practically unsinkable. However, the watertight compartment design had a critical flaw that contributed to Titanic's sinking. While the individual bulkheads were watertight, the wall separating the bulkheads extended only a few feet above the water line, allowing water to pour from one compartment into another, especially if the ship began to list or pitch forward. The insufficient number of lifeboats carried on Titanic was the second crucial safety breach that contributed to the loss of so many lives. Only 16 boats, plus four Engelhurt collapsibles, could fit 1,178 people. Titanic could carry up to 2,435 passengers, and with a crew of around 900, she could transport more than 3,300 people. As a result, even if the lifeboats were fully loaded during an emergency evacuation, just one-third of individuals on board had available seats. While insufficient by today's standards, Titanic's supply of lifeboats actually exceeded the criteria of the British Board of Trade. Those who boarded the Titanic When the Titanic set sail from Southampton, England, on April 10, 1912, it caused quite a commotion. Following stops in Cherbourg, France, and Queenstown, Ireland, the ship set sail for New York with 2,240 passengers and crew, or souls, as the term was used in the maritime business at the time, generally in connection with the sinking. On board, many of these souls were high-ranking officials, wealthy industrialists, dignitaries, and celebrities, as befitting the world's most famed ship's first transatlantic journey. J. Bruce Ismay managing director of White Star Line, was the first to arrive, escorted by Thomas Andrews, the ship's builder from Harland & Wolf. J.P. Morgan, whose International Mercantile Marine Shipping Trust controlled the White Star Line and had appointed Ismay as a corporate officer, was not present. Morgan had planned to join his colleagues on the Titanic but had to cancel at the last minute due to a business concern. The wealthiest passenger was John Jacob Astor IV, heir to the Astor fortune who had made headlines a year earlier by marrying Madeleine Talmadge Force, a young lady 29 at the time. Other notable passengers included Easy Dor Strauss, the elderly owner of Macy's, 
and his wife Ida, industrialist Benjamin Guggenheim, who was accompanied by his mistress, valet, and chauffeur, and widow and heiress Margaret Molly Brown, who earned the moniker the unsinkable Molly Brown by helping to maintain calm and order while the lifeboats were being loaded and boosting the spirits of her fellow survivors. The staff who attended to this group of first-class celebrities were largely traveling second-class, along with scholars, tourists, journalists, and others who would receive service and accommodations comparable to first-class on most other ships. However, the greatest group of passengers was in third-class, with over 700 individuals, outnumbering the other two levels combined. Some had spent less than $20 to cross the river. Third-class was the main source of profit for shipping lines like White Star, and Titanic was built to provide these passengers with accommodations and facilities that were superior to those found on any other ship of the time. The Titanic Sets Sail The Titanic's departure from Southampton on April 10, 1912, was not without anomalies. A small coal fire was detected in one of her bunkers, which was a frightening but typical event on steamships of the time. To get to the bottom of the blaze, firefighters hosed down the smoldering coal and shoveled it aside. After reviewing the situation, the captain and chief engineer determined that it was unlikely that any damage to the hull structure had occurred, and the stokers were directed to continue fighting the fire at sea. According to scenario advanced by a small group of Titanic experts, the fire became uncontrollable after the ship departed Southampton causing the crew undertake a full speed crossing going at such a high speed they were unable to escape the iceberg. Another frightening thing occurred after the Titanic departed the dock in Southampton. As she took off, she narrowly avoided colliding with the America Lines SS New York. Superstitious Titanic fans regard this as the worst type of portent for a ship embarking on her first voyage. The Titanic collides with an iceberg. Titanic received sporadic reports of ice from other ships on April 14, after four days of smooth sailing, but she was cruising on calm seas under a moonless, bright sky. A lookout observed an iceberg approaching out of a slight haze dead ahead at around 11.30 p.m., sounded the warning bell, and phoned the bridge. The engines were rapidly reversed, and the ship was sharply turned, rather than colliding directly with the berg, Titanic appeared to brush along its side, depositing ice shards over the forward deck. The lookouts were relieved when they saw no crash. They had no idea the iceberg had a sharp underwater spur that sliced a 300-foot gash in the ship's hull beneath the waterline. By the time the captain and Harland and Wolf's Thomas Andrews examined the damaged area, five compartments were already filled with seawater, and the bow of the doomed ship was ominously tilted downward, allowing seawater to stream from one bulkhead into the next. Andrews quickly calculated that the Titanic could float for an hour and a half, or somewhat longer. The captain, who had already told his wireless operator to ask for assistance, then ordered the lifeboats to be loaded. The Lifeboats of the Titanic with the lowering of the first lifeboat a little more than an hour after contact with the iceberg, a mainly disorganized and unplanned evacuation began. The ship was built to carry 65 people, but only 28 made the trip. Tragically, this was to become the norm. During the uncertainty and panic preceding Titanic's sinking, nearly every lifeboat would be released miserably underfilled, some with only a handful of passengers. Women and children boarded the boats first, in accordance with sea law, men were allowed to board only when there were no women or children close. Despite this, many of the victims were women and children, as a result of chaotic processes that failed to bring them to the boats in the first place. Titanic stayed afloat for about three hours, exceeding Andrew's projection. During those hours, we observed both craven cowardice and tremendous valor. Between the order to load the lifeboats and the ship's last dive, hundreds of human dramas played out. Men drove away spouses and children, families were split up in the chaos, and generous people gave up their seats to stay with loved ones or allow a more vulnerable passenger to escape. In the end, 706 passengers escaped the Titanic's sinking. The Titanic Sinks The Titanic's most famous passengers all reacted to the situation in ways that have become part of the Titanic legend. Ismay, the managing director of White Star, assisted in loading some of the boats and afterwards climbed onto a collapsible as it was being lowered. Although no women or children were present when he abandoned ship, he would never forget the humiliation of surviving the accident when so many others died. The Titanic's principal designer, Thomas Andrews, was last seen in the first-class smoking area, staring blankly at a ship painting on the wall. Astor loaded his pregnant wife Madeline into a lifeboat and requested if he may join her, refused admittance, he got to kiss her goodbye just before the boat was lowered away. Despite being offered a ticket due to his age, Isidore Strauss rejected, and his wife Ida refused to leave her husband behind. 
They withdrew to their cottage and died together. When Benjamin Guggenheim and his valet went to their rooms and changed into formal evening attire, he reportedly said, We are dressed in our best and are prepared to go down like gentlemen. Molly Brown assisted in loading the boats and was eventually compelled to be one of the last to depart. She begged the ship's crew to return for survivors. But they refused, afraid they would be overrun by desperate people fleeing the frigid seas. Titanic ultimately sank beneath the ocean's surface on April 15, 1912, nearly perpendicular and with several of her lights still aglow. After hearing Titanic's distress signal at midnight and racing at full speed all night while skirting ice floes, Cunard's Carpathia collected up all of the lifeboats throughout the morning. They only had 706 survivors. The Titanic Disaster's Aftermath at least five separate inquiry boards on both sides of the Atlantic held comprehensive hearings on the Titanic's sinking, interviewing scores of witnesses and conferring with a plethora of maritime specialists. Every conceivable topic was investigated, from the officers' and crew's behaviors to the ship's design. There were a plethora of Titanic conspiracy theories. While it has long been assumed that the ship sank as a result of the gash that caused the bulkhead compartments to flood, other theories have emerged over the years, including that the ship's steel plates were too brittle for the near-freezing Atlantic waters, that the impact caused rivets to pop, and that the expansion joints failed, among others. Aside from the technological features of the disaster, the Titanic's sinking has taken on a deeper, almost legendary significance in popular culture. Many people see the catastrophe as a morality tale about the hazards of human arrogance, the Titanic's designers thought they had designed an unstoppable ship that could not be overcome by natural laws. This same arrogance explains why the Titanic's sinking had such an electrifying effect on the public. There was considerable incredulity that the ship could not have sunk, and misinformation proliferated due to the era's sluggish and unreliable means of communication. Newspapers first stated that the ship had collided with an iceberg but had remained afloat and was being hauled back to port with all on board. It took many hours for accurate stories to become publicly available, and even then, many people found it difficult to believe that this paragon of contemporary technology could drown on her maiden journey, taking almost 1,500 souls with her. The Titanic's narrative has been linked to the Challenger Space Shuttle accident of 1986 by maritime historian John Maxtone Graham. In that case, the entire world recoiled at the prospect of one of the most advanced inventions ever made exploding into oblivion alongside its crew. Both catastrophes caused a sudden drop in confidence, indicating that, despite our arrogance and reliance in technological perfection, we are nevertheless vulnerable to human frailties and error. The Titanic wreck, attempts to discover the Titanic's wreckage began soon after it sank. However, technical limitations, as well as the breadth of the North Atlantic search area, made it incredibly difficult to locate. Finally, in 1985, a joint U.S.-French expedition discovered the RMS Titanic's wreckage. The sunken ship was discovered in the North Atlantic about 400 miles east of Newfoundland, 13,000 feet below the surface. Subsequent explorations discovered that the wreck is in relatively good shape, with many goods on board still intact, including jewelry, furniture, shoes, machinery, and other items. The wreck has been studied multiple times since its discovery by manned and unmanned submersibles, notably the Titan, which collapsed during what would have been its third dive to the site in June 2023. The RMS Titanic sinking, the largest ship in the world, marked a turning point in maritime safety and ice patrol because it affected the way millions of people thought about sailing, added safety regulations, and created new government agencies, including the International Ice Patrol. The Titanic disaster remains one of history's biggest maritime catastrophes, and a number of new laws have been passed since then to improve ocean safety. Because of its large impact, the Titanic will never be forgotten. It changed sea safety and shipbuilding, forever correcting centuries of error and saving lives. As first international disaster, Titanic will be immortalized in the hearts of its victims. It has been said that Titanic is the third most widely recognized word in the world following God and Coca-Cola by Daniel Allen Butler. Thank you for spending your precious time with us. Make sure you already subscribe to this channel and turn the notification on so never miss our upcoming video. Please do support us to build this channel just by clicking the like button. Comment down below if you have any request about some topics or someone and share this video to your beloved one in social media. See you on our next video. Thank you.